Hello and welcome to Crafting Unedited. My name is Sierra and today we're gonna sublimate some flip flops. It's getting warmer here in Ohio where I live and unfortunately it only gets warm for like three days out of the year in my opinion. Reality it's like maybe a month of warmth total throughout the year but when we can wear flip flops we wear the flip flops. So, I am in my best friend's wedding, and I thought that it would be really nice to, for her bachelorette party, it's in July, it's going to be hot, we're going to be out in the wine country area of Ohio, whatever you want to call that, and um, so I thought that what a better gift to give her than some flip-flops. Now, normally for these, like, bachelorette things, it's more like, um x-rated stuff or r-rated stuff but i wanted to do something simple and kind of goes along with her wedding colors and something that she could wear on her wedding day if she wanted to as well but she's got tennis shoes for that and i'm super pumped to do those too but for now we're gonna stick to the flip-flops got a little derailed there so the flip-flops these are from heat transfer warehouse they are medium i hope they'll fit her um, and they were kind enough to send these to me. They might be a little big for her, but that's okay. Um, so as you can see, the top, this piece is the tops, the straps. So I'm going to show you the whole process on how to make these. Um, and then I've got my pictures here, my transfers. I've got scissors, heat resistant tape, and my butcher paper. The butcher paper I use is actually parchment paper and it's from Costco. It doesn't have a wax coating. That is very important. You want to make sure that the butcher paper, wax paper, coat, not wax paper, parchment paper, whatever paper you're using for sublimation does not have any type of wax coating as that will make your image not transfer at all. <laughs> um, learned that one the hard way, unfortunately, but lesson learned. So moving on. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started. My heat press is set to 600 or sorry, ooh, 400 degrees in 60 seconds, 400 degrees for 60 seconds, not 600 degrees. So it's already warm. I've already lifted my heat press to the height that I need it to be. And I've got everything else ready. Just gonna open this up here so they come like this so that you could if you wanted to do an all-over design you could just cut out or like print out a giant square or rectangle of the design and then just press on top I'm not doing that um, I just have those simple things so I'm gonna take them out of the cutout this is fun these are actually a lot thicker than I would have thought they would be for something like this. I was expecting like super thin Dollar Tree. Sorry guys. Um, <laughs> thickness, but this is awesome because this is good quality. It is like a fabric-y material, so I will be using a lint brush on these before I get to pressing. Um, but we're going to go ahead and move the camera down so that you can see what I'm doing and get going. There you go. Oh, a little shaky there. All right. I don't use a lint roller. I use a lint brush. Um, I don't know. It's less sticky. And just as effective. I got a piece of hair on there. I can't tell if it's dog hair or my hair because we have the same hair color. That's done and done. And now we're going to put these guys on here. See, simple, floral, matches her wedding colors. All that good, fun stuff. And I'm gonna put it like, not on the ball up here where the toes are, but like here. I thought about putting it here, but one, I made it too big, and two, that's where all the pressure is going to go, so it could, like, rub off pretty easily. I want it kind of, like, 
right? Where there's not a whole lot of pressure on the foot so that they'll last longer. That seems about right. And then I'm gonna put them side by side so that I can evenly space it. And this could, if I had the artist capacity and the patience to do like, I wanted to do a him and a her or a her and a him. That way when she puts them together, they're holding hands or something, which would have been super, super, super cute. But one, none of the pictures I found had a bald guy in it and I needed a bald guy for him. And two, I couldn't get the dress right. It wasn't, her dress is one of a kind. So there's no finding one that's similar. So it bugged me enough to not do it that way. So I just did this. Maybe I'll be able to find that for her shoes for wedding day, but for now, this will do. Okay, so that's about as even as I'm going to get it. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry about that. I felt that one coming. And we're just going to pull off some tape here. Goodness, maybe. On the tape struggle bus today. Oh my lordy. Come on, I just need one more piece. Oh my lordy. Oh no, that one's covered in dog hair. I have a golden in case you're wondering. And he is a shedding beast. King of shed. Between his hair and my hair, our house is covered. It's awful. Oh, well, that was dumb of me. I forgot. My table is painted. I'm going to change that piece of tape because in this one. Because there's paint on it and I don't want that to transfer out to oh, the shoe. You can see what I'm doing, right? Yes. The pollen right now is just absolutely absurd, unnecessary, and ridiculous. <clears throat> okay, ready to roll. And then we've got our butcher paper. I'm going to go for my bigger sheet here, and we're just going to place it right on top like that. Right? I locked this a little bit. Put these bad boys here. There we go. And then you want to make sure that you cover the entire shoe if you're doing a full print, only the print area if you want, or not the entire shoe. Okay, and as you can see, it literally is just sitting right on top. I'm gonna give it just a little bit more pressure here. Just a smidge. And I already set the timer because there is already heat pushing into the um, shoe. You don't want a ton of pressure on any sublimation that you do um, for several reasons. You'll get like outlines of where your transfer is sitting. Um, you can get scorching, things like that. It's really easy to get with sublimation. So you don't need a ton of pressure. What you need is even this ev the evenly distributed heat. That's the key to sublimation. So again, this is literally just like hovering right on top of it. I can move it around if I wanted. Um, not a lot of pressure at all. So if you're using like an easy press or a mini press or anything like that, you would literally just set it on top. 
no pressure is needed, no extra pressure outside of that is needed. And you're using more of a automated press where it tells you how much pressure you're putting onto a product. Easiest thing is to do light to medium pressure. And I am adamant on throwing my butcher paper away as soon as I am done pressing. Why? So that I don't try to reuse it by accident. All right, so take those off of the heat remove your transfers and adore your beautiful work. <laughs> All right, so that part is done. Now for the tricky part of figuring out how to put these on. Close my heat press back up. It can't be that hard. It's gotta be just like if you are at the theme park or in the middle of a store and your flip-flop comes out of the thing. It's gotta be that simple, right? It's just gotta be. Just push it through. Maybe. Maybe just push it through. Um, okay, it even has a left and a right. So this would be the right one. Hmm. Huh. Interesting. See, it has a little R. And then it tells you on the other one, medium. Well, it's pretty nifty. I should just be able to push it in. Maybe I'm just not strong enough. So push the darn thing in. Mm. <laughs> the sublimation part of it is gorgeous. It turned out really, really nice. But this part I'm struggling with because I don't know that I'm strong enough to push this through. Getting a little assistance from a screwdriver. I didn't help at all. I almost got it. It's just so hard. It hurts your fingers too. I thought this would be easier. Is there a better way? All right, stay tuned for part two. I'm gonna do a little research real quick. I'm back. And with the help of some pliers, I got one through. And I'm hoping that it's the right one because I don't want to do that again. All right, so basically what I did was I put the pliers through the hole and then pushed them open just a smidge, just enough to get the edge here in to the plier nose and gripped it see and then I gave it a death grip and I pulled <laughs> this does require some strength apparently Oh no, too far. Got it. And then, next one. This is the right one, you right? Right, right, yep. Yeah. <laughs> I had to do the whole L and R thing. L, lefty, loosey, righty, tidy. Which one is my right side? Again, same thing, just getting that in there. And then death grip and pull. I'm glad I didn't try these after I had my shoulder surgery. Jeez, I would have been able to do it. There we go, one down. Tandar. That's beautiful. 
And then I want it to be flush on the bottom there. There we go. Don't know how comfy they're going to be, but they actually look like they'll be pretty comfy. We'll see. All right, next one. <clears throat> oh, look, there's the L. All right, again, shove it through. I have comments. We'll leave it. Now, when you do this, you want to make sure that, because you don't want to have to do this again or have to pull it out, because if you have to pull it out, you're going to ruin the whole quality of the, the strap. It's going to fall out. So you want to make sure that you have the smooth side on top, not the rigid side. Or maybe I have that backwards. Son of a biscuit. Is it supposed to? Ah, I'm a tardo. I'm pretty sure I have that backwards. And that's why it looks so funny on that shoe because it's supposed to go like this. I have to pull it out. I'm an idiot. Why did I think? Lord have mercy. Save my brain. This makes so much more sense. <laughs> I had a moment, guys. <gasps> Come on, you can do it. <clears throat> Jesus Christ. Cheese and rice, sorry. Wait. Wait a gosh darn minute. Because if I do it this way, then it has to be like, like this. I looked, there's no video on how to do this part. <laughs> I'm having a moment. <clears throat> okay, so the picture on the manufacturer's website, Heat Transfer Warehouse, has it this way. So I'm going to go with it's right. So now I just realized that I should have done these two first and then this one and it would have been much easier, but my name is Sierra and I do things complicated. I do them the complicated way. Because now I have to figure out how to bend and twist and shape and break. <laughs> It's a good thing I didn't go to my workout yet because I'm going to get a workout in doing this. I'm going to get there and the trainers going to be like, why is it, why is this drop weak? <laughs> this is exactly how it's shown in the picture, so. Look at it, like, I don't know. Maybe it'll all work out in the end. Have faith in my dumb, my stupidity. It's getting easier as I do it more. Okay. See, it's like. It'll probably, like, eventually work its way around. I think it's just because of the way it was in the packaging. It's folding inward and that's what's making it weird. But this does look much better. All right, now let's figure out how to get this guy out without breaking the whole darn shoe. And I could actually just take these two out instead of all three. <laughs> Again, I'm trying not to ruin the whole shoe by doing this. I feel like I should have just left that one, did that one this way, but now I gotta undo this one. <sighs> Pull and pray. Mm. 
my thought process here is get one edge of the round out and then push it the whole thing through. Well, now you can clearly see that these are very durable. Very quality, high quality. <sighs> My arms hurt. <laughs> Material here. All right, so then instead of doing the front strap, I just twisted it, turned it around. Now I only have to put two back in. This should not have taken this long. I'm sorry, guys. But on a positive note, because these have already been pulled through once, this should be pretty easy to pull the back through. I wouldn't say pretty easy, easier. <laughs> now that I've loosened it up a little bit, there I go with the comments again. I'm sorry. It's just where my mind goes. I have a feeling there's going to be lots of comments on this video. <laughs> Alrighty, look at that. We did it. Yay! Great success. My first pair of custom flip-flops. So cute. So, I'm doing this whole thing for my best friend, her wedding. And I have a notebook that I did for her as well. And she's wearing tennis shoes on her wedding day for her dress instead of heels, which I'm grateful for because I get to wear tennis shoes too. Um, so <laughs> I did, um, I'm also doing a pair of socks for her as well. Um, so she wears socks on the day of. And so I'm super pumped about these. These will match this and her socks. <laughs> And so, yeah, these are super cute. I would try on, try one on, but I'm not going to because I've been stepping on my dog hair floors. So I'm not going to do that. But super cute. Once this like works its way into a state that it should be in, what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to ball up piece of paper or something and put it right here. That way it forms itself to the way that it should be so that when she wears them, they're not super uncomfortable and she doesn't really have to do much breaking in. So I'm gonna put a piece of paper or something right here just so that it forms itself the way that the top part should be. All right, folks, that's it. That's how you sublimate onto flippy floppies and how you put the strappies in. I feel like the strappy part's gonna be the most popular part of this video because Sublimation is sublimation. If you've done it before, then you've done it before and you know what you're doing for the most part. But the straps, I looked for like 20 minutes, couldn't find a video on how to put the straps in. So there you go. That my friends is how you do it. You use some of these guys. Make sure you use the ones with their grippies because ones without grippies will not work. Okay, so happy crafting. Make sure you like, subscribe, all that good fun stuff to this channel and my video. Drop a comment. If you liked my commentary, we're besties now. <laughs> if you didn't, I'd greatly apologize. Still be my friend though. Um, get yourself some flip-flops from Heat Transfer Warehouse and I'll see you next time.